Hey, welcome back to Cable Data Science uh, Center. I want to give you a quick overview, introduction to uh, to how to use R projects in R Studio to manage your, all your all your R projects and code. Okay. And once you learn this technique, you'll you'll never go back. You'll 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 you'll, you'll never stop using. Well, you never stop using until you until you uh, until you uh, take the next next step up and use Git. But that's a, that's a subject for a different video. So anyway, the use of projects is very simple. The first thing I suggest you, that you do after you got R and R Studio installed, and what I'm about to show you is the same regarding using for Mac OS, Linux, or Windows. The basic process is the same. Uh, R Studio is the same. So the first thing you want to do, you want to you want to set up a top level directory for all of your projects. Now you see here, I have a top level directory for all my R projects. Now, if you come down here, this is an, these are all R projects. They're all subdirectories, okay? All right. Now, you, you but uh, over here, I've also so if I was, for instance, taking a class Stats 101, I would set up a top-level directory uh, under under uh, I'd set up a oh, oh wow. <laughs> Better yet, let's just start from the top. Okay. No wonder that didn't make any sense. All right. So here we are. Oh, I don't know. Let me see something. Wait, wait, wait. I'm right. I'm right. I was starting to confuse myself there for a, little, for a minute. So the, so the first thing I want you to do, I want you to set up a top-level directory for your code. Now, I'm using R. Okay. I'm on top of that. that way, if I had some Python program or HTML, I would set up, you know, a Python directory. If I would, I would come up here and I'd set up a uh, Python directory. Okay, that would be the top of the project directory. Then I would create my R projects underneath there. Okay, and there's two ways. To, and there's two ways to. Uh, there's. There's there's two ways you can go at this point. Uh, I'm going to start with directly. From, I'm, going to, I'm going to start with the. Uh, you can either, you can either create your project directly first, and then and then and then point R Studio to it, or you can actually create the directory within R Studio. I'm going to show you the second method, just for just for consistency. So we're going to open up our uh, open up our. Uh, R Studio, click New Projects. Yes, save that one right there. A new directory, a new project. And what it's going to do is it's going to create all of my directories underneath here. All Direct your name is the name of your project. Now, at this point, I want to encourage you to use meaningful field names, meaningful directory name, project names, okay? You know, chapter one's okay, but what's chapter one about? Okay. Um, so let's let's set up, let's set up some, let's let's do this. Let's do a uh, oh I don't know CVID nineteen dash fitted curve. So I'm, I'm going to use I'm going to use this to uh, put you know, or, or I could say you know chapter ten fitted, or I might say you know chapter dash eleven dash fitted curves. Okay. So let's let's go ahead let's go ahead and fix that curve right there. So now we got our now we got our our, our project directory.
Okay. First thing I want you first I want you to type G W D brackets. So GW says get get the current working directory. So the current working directory is home David Jackson stats 101 chapter 11 fitted current. Okay. The reason this is important because we're using the R project, we don't have to worry about the working directory. The working directory is the is, is the project directory. So you don't need any past statements when you go to read your data and stuff like that. Okay. So the first thing I want you to do after that is come over here, packages, run package update. And you may and what will happen is if you have any packages to update, you'll get a list up here. And it'll say uh, select all and then install update. So I would say, I mean, I run package update almost every day when I start our studio just by habit. But I would say, you know, at least once, run package update at least once a week. Okay? Particularly if, if you're upgrading to, to like our 4.0 or 4.02 or something like that. Okay? Now, the next thing I want you to do, I want you to come over here and I want you to install ggplot2. ggplot2 is a data visualization or plotting library for uh, for R. It's very easy to use. It's, once, you, once, you re, once you see how simple it is, uh, you'll never go back to trying on base plots again. Okay? Uh, I've already got that installed, so I'm not going to use that. So now let's come over here, and we got uh, set up a new R script. Let's call this... Uh, Nineteen. Okay, because I'm going to be using some COVID-19 data. Okay, so now we got our main products. So we we got our products directory set up. We got our library installed. So now, um, first thing you do is, what I suggest you do is, install your libraries first. Okay. Next, you want to read your. Next, we're going to read your directory. Now, there's more than one way to do this, but uh, the method here, read read.sc is, is, a, is a base R function. There's also like that you can use like data table and uh, in tidy plot or tidy or tidy verse. Both have their own uh, data read functions, but I'm just showing you the most basic thing. Now, remember how I said that that the current working directory is a project. The project directory is a current working directory. Okay, so that's all you got to do to come over here now is come over here, downloads. Let's, let's go to R, let's go to data, and we're going to copy this data. Under our fitted curve directory, and there it is. Over here, this is the current working directory. Uh, okay, I guess it's already there. I'm, I'm not sure how it got there by itself, but <laughs> that's kind of odd. Okay, here's our data. Here's our okay. Here we are. Here we are. There. So this is so this is a this is our project directory. Okay. Now. Because the because the because the, click on this file thing right this file tab down at the bottom or, or look for the file tab click on that here's our current project directory you see it's under stats it's under home stats 101 chapter 11 fitted curve here's our data this is our current script this is the project directory if you open up a file manager and you click on that project directory it should open up our studio for you with the project already. So now we're going to do, we're simply going to read in this initial data. Dot slash means the current directory. And by, hit, by hitting the tab, at least on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on the laptop you do, we can now select the uh, our data. Okay. So we're going, to, we're going to take a quick look at the structure of the, of, of the data. You know, I, I suggest putting all of your 
uh, all your all your libraries and all your all, and all your uh, you know data read functions and data and data wrangling functions at the top of your script rather, rather than scattering libraries throughout the script put them all at the top and load them all at once okay so let's see what happens on this now oh good so we come over here what we can see is there's 45,599 observations and five variables. Variables, we think of variables, think columns, the columns in a table, okay? And these are the column headings. The first one is date, is a date field, but as you can see over here, it's a factor and it's not a date, so we gotta fix that. Uh, the cases, this are all integer fields that you would expect. This is the, this is the country name. This is, this is an abbreviation for the country. So the first thing we wanna do is now, you want to come back and fix the date field. So the first thing we got to do is G sub. So we want to place. So it's, we want to place the the slash with a dash, commas between the commas between the various parts of the function, between the uh, between the objects, and now and now the name of the data frame and the field we want to fix. So if we run this again up here, let's see what let's see what it looks like now. Okay. Now in R, you can either use an equal sign to assign it, or a, or a, a right arrow or a left arrow and a dash. I prefer the left, right arrow and a dash personally. Oops. Okay. So let's try this one more time. So now you can see the date field has been converted to a character field with dashes, and that's and that's and that's what R looks for by default. So now we got to convert the date field, the character field, into a date. I'm going to use the as date function. Yeah, colon date, comma format equals. Uh, what's what's that? A percent sign. Month, two digit month, two digit day, four digit year. So let's try this. Let's try this one more time. Okay, now you can see that we have a date. Now you can see that we have a. Uh, now I can see it's correctly formatted and it says date. So that means it's that means it are now recognize this as a date field, not a character field. Very important. Okay. Now one more one more quick thing we can do here. Okay, is uh, let's run a summary function. Get some summary information about the data. Because if you get the first date is, uh, is, is currently 12:31, the maximum date is 9:28. Cases: the average cases is 77.6. The maximum cases is 97,894. Uh, you have a you have the average number of deaths is 21, and the, and the, and the maximum is 4,926. Okay, so now we now we want to do a subset. Pull out all the data for just Afghanistan. We do subset command. Okay. We're going to say, going to use a DF data frame, comma, uh, and the food we want to use is this GOID. Use 
two equal signs in order to in order to do a comparison operator. Okay, so we're going to do AF. We also only want the data from April first onwards. So we use we use DTE report two zero two zero dash four dash two because because the, the, the this you know, this this the April first was really the was really when the first big spike took place. Okay, so we can run this again from the top, and now we should see a little different information as far as the day. Now you can see. Oh, so now we want to do a summary of AF. Okay. What? That doesn't make any sense. Huh. That's kind of strange. Not quite sure what that's. Let's, let's try running it as a, uh, as a standalone function and see what that is. Huh. Not really sure why that's doing that for. So this is right. That's right. So now we got a, now we got Afghan, now we got our data from Afghanistan. Now we'll do a couple of readings. Now once you notice how far we've come here in only only six lines of code. Okay. What you see up here is very, it's very common to have to fix, you know, have to fix some fields. And that go sub function is really helpful. That's just the as date function. Now, of course, there are other ways to do this, but this is the most the most basic way. So now we're going to create a couple plots. This, this is what we load ggplot at the top. The data, set we, the data frame we want to use is, uh, is, uh, Is it only for Afghanistan? And this and this AES function is the aesthetics function. It assigns the variables or the columns to the x and y axis. Okay, so let's start with cases here. All right. Now at this point, all we've done is, is created a blank canvas. Okay, we can run this. We can actually run this, and what you'll see, there's nothing there. Hopefully your types make it, if you noticed it, but I actually had to put a dash there and not a, uh, and not a, let's try this. See, look at this. All we've created is a blank canvas. Okay. So if you ever get a blank canvas, it's, it's, it means you're missing, it means you're probably missing these, you're missing this function here. So, Let's say, let's say we want to do a, a scatter plot, maybe. A very common one. And in that case, because we defined our, our x and y focus over here, we don't need to define it over here. And now we got our plot. Okay? Now we got our plot. Okay. This for the fun of it. That's 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 add a second thing. Let's add a. Uh, okay, if you want to scatter plot, you want to use the geom plot uh, point function. Let's see if let's see if we can maybe get a. Uh, let's do C O L equals. So we, we want the scatter points to to be the uh, to be the uh, plot also. Okay. Now you can see this is COVID-19 cases, so the so the actual count is is a, is a spot. Okay. For whatever reason, we have from here up to here, then back down again. Okay. So now now we got now we got the uh, both the line plot and and the points and the, and the points plotted over top the line. All right. 
So that's his fitted label here. Use the, use the uh, labs function to sign the title and, and the X and Y labels. E T equals not necessarily the same as the date as when it was at. Y equals okay. So we're up to ten lines already. So let's run this one more time. Okay, so now you can see we added the title, y, y labels, and X labels. There's lots of other things you can do, but that may be for a later date. Uh, I just want to, uh, I want to tell you what you do, but when you're, when you're trying to learn our program or anything for that matter, your two best friends are Google and YouTube. Okay. Now, let's do this again. We'll make a couple chances. Let's, 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 plot de let's plot deaths now. And yes, and yes, cut and paste is your friend. Don't type any more things than you have to, any more words you have to. And let's add one more thing to that. Let's say we want to do some type of fitted curve. Let's say we want to do what's called a low res or low as fitted curve. So it's G. Smooth. So let's take a look at our So here's our here's our initial letter, here's our initial curve, kind of captures the big picture, but it's not quite as. But we can do better. Uh, we we can tweak the curve by using what's called a span. Zero point. I find zero point two five works pretty well. Okay, take a second look here. As you can see, this is a little bit better fit. Okay, a little bit better fit. It looks like it looks like the deaths are actually for Afghanistan pretty level. You got you got you got some spikes here. You know these spikes could be like a weekend day or something like that, or like a Monday fall on the weekend. It's hard to say. But anyway, so we got, now we got a little bit better idea of, uh, of, of what it's doing. Okay, now you can also use a method. So let's, let's do a now. Let's just do a straight linear regression model instead. So then we got a straight linear regression model. But what are what are our options as far as uh, as methods for this? Geom, smooth. Okay. So we come down here. Method. Well, let's see. We got a linear regression model. We got a GLM. We got a GAM. We got LESS function or very function, e.g., mass colon colon R RLM or MGCV GAM stats. So let's try GAM and see what that gives us here. Dad, he quotes around there. So 
So now we, now we got a GAM, a GAM, which looks pretty much the same to me. So what else can we do here? So I don't know what the mask, uh, what this does, this calls the package names and the double colon calls a function within the package. So we're going to, we're going to use the RLM function from the mask package. All right. Let's see how this works out there. Now, uh, this just a word of warning. I, I have no idea what I'm, I have no idea what I'm, as far as, I have no idea what, what these functions mean. You probably, you probably know more about these functions than I do. Okay. So let's try this again now. Okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. Let's see. Huh. Well, it's probably because I don't have the mass library installed. Well, you know what? Let's do this mass installed. I want to note your screen arrangement may be different than mine. So you may have to look around for, for like the package the package library, the package menu, and stuff like that. What is this? What happens if we did reloaded? And ran this. And then tried to do this. So I'm not sure if it's actually doing any good or not. But anyway, so you get the idea. It really is this simple, okay? So under, under 15 lines of code, we read data, we cleaned data, uh, and, we, and we created two plots. We pulled out data, and we created two plots. And we plotted cases of deaths with COVID-19 for the country of Afghanistan. Let's just restore this to one more time. Now we're back to where we started. Okay. Okay, so that's, uh, so just in summary, most of, you know, just in summary, create a top-level directory for all your code, whether that's a, a, a directory, it's, whether the directory, the top-level directory is the name of a course you're taking, or in my case, the type of language I'm using. Okay, and then use the R project function in R Studio to create a project directory for all your code and your and your data. Because remember, so the, the advantage to that again is, okay, just just remind you how you get to get new project, save selected, new directory, new project, name the subdirectory. All right. And the advantage again is it sets the working directory to the project directory. So once again up here, you, you, you don't have to use any path statements in order to read your data in. Okay. Then of course here I came down, I fixed the date. I pulled out the data for Afghanistan, put in summary statistics. Then I plotted cases using basic, uh, I plotted both points and lines for the cases. Afghanistan, and then I plotted. Then I plotted uh, 
desk with points and lines and a smooth curve and a smooth LOES LOS curve, LOESS curve. And that's pretty much it for right now. This should be enough to actually get you really started. From this point on, your two best friends again are, are, are Google and YouTube. All right. So we'll catch you in the next report. Take care. Bye.